Hey everybody, welcome to another Volition stream. Uh, it's actually been a little bit. We've been doing dev chat streams for a while, but uh, there, there's a bit of a break there, so I figured we'd get back to it. Uh, I'm Josh Jensen, video, video editor here, and uh, on the couch today, we've streams got... Streams are. Oh, and streams are, right. I always forget to say streams are. <laughs> That's because that one's not listed on, like, my pay stub or anything. <laughs> See, it will be. I'm Mark Kirkland. I'm the lead VFX artist here at Volition. And uh, over in the control room, Mike's back. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Missed you guys last week. Mike Watson here, senior community developer. I will be moderating chat uh, and doing production duties behind the scenes. Um, so if you have any questions for Mark or Josh, uh, post them in chat, and I will relay them on. Uh, as far as news goes, we are doing a special stream on Monday. Uh, for the 11th anniversary of Saints Row 2. You are not going to want to miss it. It is going to be awesome. And I cannot <laughs> wait to talk about it and all the work <laughs> that we've been doing behind the scenes for it. It's, um, <laughs> it's been a long time coming. And a lot of my cryptic tweets that you may have seen online will all become clear. <laughs> Whoa. I'm going to turn you back over to Josh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm excited. Like, yeah. 11 That'll be a cool years. One. It's freaking ridiculous. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so this is a dev chat. I guess I'll just get right to and ask you, uh, how long have you been working in Volition for? Uh, it will be 15 years uh, this year. And is this, have you worked in other places in the game, games industry before this? or? Uh, I have not. Prior to this, I did a lot of picture framing. Okay. And uh, I worked at uh, Flight Simulation. I worked at Frasca. I worked at Flight Simulation. Did Flight Simulation plays? Oh, really? Um, but no, this is my first uh, first game job. Wow. Uh, what Did you always want to work in games, or is it just a thing where it's just like, oh, this might be cool? Oh, sure. It, like everybody, right? Like anybody who <laughs> played video games uh, growing up, right, of course. was like, I want to do that, of mm -hmm. course, right? And, you know, that was in the dark days of... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, right? You know, right. like there, it was, you know, it was sort of all magic uh, at that point. I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't know how to get, you know, my parents didn't know, like, I have no idea, you know, they have no idea <laughs> what any of it was. It was, you know, right. how do you make a Nintendo game? I don't know. You have to be a programmer, right? Yeah. And so, um, so for years, it was just kind of that, you know, sort of intangible thing and uh, in moving uh, to Champaign we moved here because my wife got a job here mm. uh, she was an occupational therapist um, and uh, I was taking uh, I, I just went to school for uh, art, I have a BA in art, mm -hmm. just fine art so super uh, <laughs> super saleable uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> but um I was taking, I had been doing uh, a lot of picture framing. I was work, I worked in, uh, I did stained glass for about three years. Okay. Uh, and I needed, and I was going back to school for computers because I didn't have any computer experience. Mm -hmm. And all the want ads <laughs> at that time, uh, that, that's a newspaper ad where they advertise for jobs. <laughs> um, back in the old days. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it were th th there was I didn't have an, I didn't have enough computer experience and so I was going back to uh, Parkland Community College here uh, right. to get more computer experience. I took some programming. I and uh, got into I learned Maya there. Mm. Um, and uh, while I was there, uh, there was a job posting on the board. For uh, it would have been Free Space Two at that point. Okay. And it was like a texture artist position, and I was like, "Holy crap! <laughs> There's a video game studio here." You didn't like, know I before that. No idea. I oh no wow! Idea. We had only we had been here for several years, but okay. I didn't know. And uh, and well, I guess if you would have, even if you would have driven by Volition back then, like the, I don't think they had a sign outside like we do now. No, there was yeah. no sign. That was, that was in the, the old days. It was just in an industrial park, uh, like on the mm. kind of on the edge of town. Oh right. 
over on Fox Drive. Okay. Uh, that's where it was. And, yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I was super intrigued and then super intimidated because, <laughs> like, I didn't even know, I didn't know Photoshop. I didn't have Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Like, the <laughs> where I went to school, we had, this makes me so old, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's, it's so ridiculous. But, I mean, the art department had, like, there were six computers in for, like, the graphic design students. It was yeah. a very small school, small art department. And so, I did, you know, I used Photoshop, like, twice. And so I was oh, like, geez. I can't fake my way in to get this. I can't do this. I was super intimidated. But I, I took the little, there was, like, a little old-fashioned, like, paper thing with the tear-off phone number, and I had that uh, phone number in my wallet for probably, <laughs> I don't know, probably four years. And I and so I, I, I went to school, and I, I learned Maya, and I started doing more 3D stuff. I, I got a job uh, out of Parkland at, at Frasca doing environments for flight simulators. And, okay. Uh, got into, you know, you know, I was like, I was like, Sweet man, I'm getting paid to do 3D's <laughs> rad, and then uh, just continued to work on my portfolio and stuff like that, and that's how right. I, uh, that's how I finally and then applied and applied and applied. Mm-hmm. I always say I just warmed down. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't even you didn't even know anybody here yet at that point. You just like you just eventually just got in. I well, I just I applied and they were I so I started uh, on Saints Row One. So okay. At the, like early on uh, in Saints Row One, um, I applied uh, and was part of that wave. There was like a volition went through like a huge uh, exponential growth spurt on right. SR One, where like I mean it was literally like two and a half times this to three times the size oh, of wow. what it had been before. It was like nothing the studio had ever done before. Um, and so a lot of, there's a lot uh, of folks who started around that time. And that, I was sort of part of that wave. Okay. Um, I actually, I actually, so I applied, uh, I applied for environment, for environments. And uh, I got a, an offer to do um, outsourcing. And mm. so it was, and, uh, so this is outsource management, but it, we it was the first, and so they were like, said it, and I said, well, is it a production? Like, is it still a production job? Because I, I I really want to, I really want to make wanna, stuff. Yeah, you want to. I want to make stuff. Create. I do yeah, exactly. And they were like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We think it'll probably take like twenty percent of your time. Okay. And I was like, <laughs> okay, foot in the door, sure. And it was not 20% of my time. It was like 150% of my time. Oh, jeez. Because <laughs> it, cra- it was crazy. Those were crazy days. Uh, Volition, this open world is brand new. Right. Xbox 360 was brand new. Uh, the team was brand new. Uh, open world genre is brand new. Yeah. And, uh, and outsourcing uh, they had never done. The studio had never done outsourcing mm-hmm. uh, on the scale that we that we did on SR one, and and so nobody knew like what we were doing. We were just <laughs> making it up on the fly. It was oh, ridiculous, and so like it was crazy. You know they they hired me. You know it was like oh he's he's got art experience and. I had some technical experience. I'd done mail scripting and stuff like that at mm-hmm. um, at Fresca, and um, and so they were like, "Okay, he'll be a good fit. He can do you know some of what we need." Is kind of what uh, what they were thinking, I think. But okay. it was a crazy thing to hire somebody super green and and have them run uh, outsourcing. And so um, Flegel was always like, "Good on you for not." <laughs> crashing the project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, 
was managing absurd. So so okay. It so was absurd. I, you you were managing the the outsourcing. Was just was this just for like art assets, or was this outsourcing for anything related to the project? It was uh, it was specifically buildings. Um, okay. Because the city um, was uh, was so big, um, and so it was it was buildings is, mm. is what it was and. It was crazy. I should have brought. I still have in my drawer. I have uh, <laughs> my folder of uh, pain. Uh, I couldn't. Um, I didn't even know Excel. Okay. So, uh, like, the only way that I could <laughs> that I could manage uh, to like keep track of everything that was coming and going is I I had uh, literal like. Old school, uh, in and out, and I had three bins on my oh, desk. God, and so I would I would write up uh, the job <laughs> sheet, and I would print it out, and and then I then I had a, a green highlighter and a red highlighter and a blue highlighter. Wow, and I would physically like move them and track them and write notes on them. Uh, and that, it was that that system actually worked out though. I, hey man. I mean, the SR1 game came out. Shipped. It came out <laughs> <laughs> Dude, against oh the God. odds. Uh, yeah, and so I still, I still have a few of those oh, that I. That's like, funny. Every year, I mean, to burn them. <laughs> I haven't. Uh, so you said you've you've been working there here since that you you've never left Lishan for a, a time and then came back or anything. No, I have not. Been here the whole time. I've been here the whole time. So have you, so have you worked? At, have you touched basically every Volition game since SR one? Was there a project you didn't work on? I have only worked on SR Saints okay. Row for life. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I uh, I moved um, I moved I have changed disciplines. So yeah. when I finished up the outsourcing contract, I said, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. It's super stressful. <laughs> um, and uh, I, uh, I switched to, to art um, and worked on multiplayer. So uh, okay. I did multiplayer art for SR1 and 2 and then, environment, and then environments for uh, SR3 mm -hmm. and 4. Um, and, uh, and so... Um, but I was always SR. I worked on. Okay. I, the only uh, the only time I didn't do uh, SR is I didn't do. Um, well, for a little bit we did. There was a period between uh, SR two and three mm -hmm. where uh, we worked on some kind of sort of some other stuff, and I did some. Uh, RFA, RFG testing. I did some testing for RFG okay. type stuff. Did you work on any of the the projects we had here that like got canceled? No. Oh, you didn't. No, nope. okay. I was always SR. Oh man, so a, consistent. I, I'm, I know that's right, uh, Mr. Consistent. That's me. <laughs> uh, feared symmetry in the chat says to to thank you for single handedly shipping Saints Row One. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. That is, that is not true. And if it sounded like that, I apologize. <laughs> To everyone else that worked on Saints Row One, that is absolutely not the case. No, uh, uh, you know, like it was a mammoth undertaking of uh, blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Oh God! <laughs> so, blood in the office. Oh man! Um, no idea. But yeah, going, man, just so consistently being on Saints Row the whole time. But you, all the you, Saints Rows, yeah. Changing disciplines. So what is it specific? So what do you do right now? For the project we unfortunately can't talk about, I uh, so I switched to uh, VFX, visual effects, uh, on uh, SR four. Actually, between SR three and four, I switched from environments to visual effects. Yeah, uh, and I am the the lead. Have an awesome VFX team. Shout out to the VFX team. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, yeah, so that, that's what I'm doing now. That's what I've been doing uh, since SR4. Okay. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I remember... Visual effects is rad. If you're interested in games, it's a plug. <laughs> do VFX. Because we're super spread thin. 
uh, not just here, like across the industry, VFX is high demand. Oh, and really? Because lots of schools don't know how to teach it. Huh. And so there's like a glut of character artists and there's environment artists and there's all that. Mm -hmm. But it's people in programs seek out, like people tend to self-identify into visual effects yeah. because nobody else is doing it and they have a group project and mm. they have to pick it up and then they're like, hey, this is kind of cool and it goes from there. And I'm telling you, that's your in. Go for it. It's fucking rad. It t does everything. You, you do you do animation, you do uh, you do modeling some, you do super cool. It's yeah, lighting, it's, it's all of it. It's everything. Yeah, I was because uh, like I've I've thought about it and like uh, there was some Twitter thread I saw, I forget which game dev it was, but they were talking about visual like VFX too. And basically talking about like VFX is like without VFX, like in games, like everything would feel so much worse. Oh, that's hundred percent true. Like it's we we add the the life to the world, right? Like there's I'm not saying, you know there's plenty like games are a huge yeah. team effort, but if you if you don't um I wish I had the video, um Brianna uh our former lead made an awesome mm -hmm. video uh, on AOM that was, she used it for a um, uh, a presentation she was doing. Yeah. And it's, and it was with and without effects. Um, oh, geez. And it's so good because, like, you know, it, it's everything, right? It's your, it's your muzzle flash, it's your tracer, it's your impact, it's uh, your, uh, your abilities, your, you know, your footfalls, your tire skids, your it's all of that, right? And mm -hmm. so um, it adds, environmentally, it adds extra movement and life to the world. And it's just how you interact with everything, right? As a player, most of the time, you know, mm -hmm. especially in our games, you're shooting everything, right? And so, like, if, if you're just, you know, doing this... <laughs> and you don't have, like, an awesome, you know, it's audio is the same way. Like, if you turn off the audio, it's super, super weird, too, right? Like, people will yeah. play, uh, even as we're uh, developing stuff, people, you know, sometimes will turn off the audio and then turn it on and be like, holy crap, it sounds so much better. Like, well, of course it does. Like, you're yeah. literally playing with nothing, right? But it's the same kind of thing, right? If you, you know, if you don't have any audio, it's the same thing. If there's no muzzle flash, when you shoot, as a player, you don't have any any uh, feedback that you did a thing. Yeah. You just like, know that I, I hit the trigger. Yeah, there's like no punch there's nothing, to anything. There's nothing, right? And so like like VFX is the primary communicator to the player of, of what you're of everything you're doing, right? Right. So it's like if you don't have that, you, like you only know that you hit something when you shot it. Like you know when you pull the trigger, you get a muzzle flash, I did a thing. And then you know when the impact happens and you you, get it, you see blood or you see concrete dust or whatever it is, whatever you're doing, whatever mm. you're shooting, it reacts. So sometimes when you're playing a game and you shoot something and nothing happens to it, you're, it's a feel bad, right? You're like, oh. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 did I, did I guess, did I miss or did it just, no, it's just that thing doesn't care that I shot it, I guess? Okay, yeah. next, you know, and you I feel, sort of go on. But. I feel like I, there's been times, like, sometimes it's just like a little, you know, bug that they didn't have time to fix or something, but sometimes you'll play a game and, like, generally everything works, you know, nice and good, but it's like you'll they'll, you'll find one surfe surface that if you shoot it, there's no hit reaction yeah, to it, yeah. and you're just oh, like, what? Sure. There's some game that I played like years ago that's like ev everything had like really nice particle effects for when you shot it, but if you shot water, nothing happened. Yep. And it was just like it felt really strange. It's just like you found like right. this is where the simulation broke down. Yeah, or whatever. exactly. I mean, I'm sure that's what it was. Just ran out of time. Yeah, like, most likely. You gotta say f it at some point. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know, it's, it's, does it ruin the game for you? Right? No, but it's, totally. It's, you know. Yeah, not. But you want that feedback, right? And that's 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 the fun of effects for sure. Is that that's that's what we do. That's what we're we're giving you that all the time, right? And so we try to make it badass. We try to make it mm -hmm. cool, and you know, f you know, feel like you know we tend to skew more, you know, action movie, right? Like mm -hmm. this way, you know, car explosion in a Michael Bay film is way different than a, like a real 
life car explosion, right? Or it's that yeah. kind of thing, right? Of you know, like we try to amp it up enough to make it sort of that feel good feeling of what you th- what you what you think in your head versus like what really happens. Yeah, totally. Which, you know, shoot yeah. a beer bottle, get a gallon of milk size <laughs> burst, right? That's kind of what we want. Yeah, <laughs> like I feel. Um, because, like, the first game I worked on here was Ages of Mayhem. I came in pretty early on pre-production. But I remember uh, when I first got here, it was all gray box still, basically. Yeah. Like, super early. But, yeah. like, some, I remember uh, when the game first started to feel like it was, like, coming together. I was finally seeing a little bit, like, oh, this is what the game's going to look like is when some of the VFX started to come in. I specifically remember uh, the one thing I thought looked really cool in that game was um, all the VFX for the sniper. Yeah. Uh, the the beam converging and then like that yeah. that uh, just that that really nice particle after they like that like resided there after they fired off their shot or whatever just all the yeah. little red dots and stuff like that was like that's some of the most satisfying like the effects <laughs> for me personally from I remember from that game. I'm super proud of of AOM. Like AOM is what it is, right? But it is a fucking beautiful game and. Uh, the VFX, I am super proud of the VFX we did in that game. It was a super uh, tall order. It was a big ask for mm-hmm. to, like, because we sort of had this, like, AOM had this very uh, unique art style, right, where it was, like, right. not cell shaded but sort of, like, we kind of were going for uh, this sort of... For with with the effects, right? Our take on the effects was to how do we make you know this something that you know at any frame of it is going to feel like a like a comic book panel, right? That yeah, that has that is a stylized effect, but works in three D. So you know can't we didn't want to just do uh, like flip books and you know we didn't have enough people. Or, or enough, you know, like none of us could do like hand draw. You know, we're going to be able to hand, you know, we're yeah. Michelle Gagne or whatever that we could like <laughs> hand draw, like uh, like Battleborn could, right? We couldn't do that, and we knew we couldn't do that. Um, yeah, especially cons- considering like we had so many playable characters. I'm sure that was like a way huge. bigger like increase like, in in VFX that had to be done. Especially was huge. Some, yes. of, some of the agents yes. like. <laughs> Their entire visual like identity was based around like VFX. Yeah. Every one of them was like a, you know yeah. it was a way different. Um, it was a way different uh, type of game, and, and just from an asset standpoint, it was huge. It was a major difference from uh, you know from uh, Saints Row, where it's like oh yeah, it's preliminary. You know, it's basically typical you know guns, ballistic guns. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe some energy stuff, you know, from SR4 or whatever. Uh, but Agents of Mayhem was, was totally different. And it was, uh, we wanted every every agent needed to have, uh, not like not only did we have red lasers versus blue lasers, right? You need <laughs> yeah. to know, is it a Legion effect or is it a, is it a Mayhem effect, right? So we had that. Mm. Uh, but then we also had uh, visual identity, right? Because... You know, uh, you could have up to three. You're you're running with three agents, and you want to know like who's mm-hmm. special, like who's you know. And um, early on, there was like a the notion that you could like do like a call in, and 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 stuff would come in from this side of the screen, and oh yeah, uh, and so you had to know like okay, I need to know that that was Daisy who shot versus. Yeah, Kingpin, who I'm using, versus whatever, right? And and, right. and so they all had to be visually distinct, and it, it was really yeah, it was super challenging. We did it was really good. We really wanted to do, um, we wanted to submit to the Visual Effects <laughs> Society that year, but we we couldn't do it. Uh, what was uh what was the hardest like out of all the agents in that game? Who was the hardest VFX wise? I remember there was a, like one or two agents who had changes coming in like really late still. So I think Oleg was one of them, maybe. Uh, Oleg had a lot going on. We did a lot of stuff with Oleg. Uh, the um, just getting there's a lot of iteration uh, on him. His kit did change. Yeah. Um, 
he was originally had this like um, he had this thing where uh, like a wall of ice was supposed he like he would like throw up this like wall of ice that he would yeah. surround people with to like like a cage match sort of vibe. Um, but there was all kinds of like technical issues with that, and so mm. we had to you know kind of pivot. Uh, Red card was uh, had a lot of changes very late, and uh, and Kingpin did too. Mm. Um, <laughs> Ryan Haas uh, delivered at the eleventh hour like a full suite of effects. Oh right, because he had for... he was the one agent with three different guns, right? Yeah. So he was uh, the original combat kit for him. Uh, was kind of this uh, SR callout um, in in like play style, like the way that you were supposed to play him was had sort of this SR run and gun vibe to it, mm-hmm. and uh, and so uh, Ryan made uh, made the effects for it. It kind of came in last minute, and then uh, totally got. Uh, reworked. Okay. The design failed and didn't really work mm-hmm. uh, in playtesting. It not failed. That's pretty harsh. Um, but uh, people didn't really get it. Didn't really understand how to leverage it and how to use it. And okay. it, it was kind of too much that you had to learn because it was like a. It was sort of a. It built on it on itself. Like you had to. Um, oh right. You had to like. I don't, I don't remember. I'm terrible. Uh, you Wasn't had, it basically like you start out with his basic gun, and then after you like yeah, killed and, enough, you would upgrade to the second or something yeah, like that? Yeah, you would upgrade to the second, but you could like, there was also a way to get like buffs, yeah. sort of like Daisy. I remember it being pretty complicated it, it was for a single complicated. Yeah. Ca- and, character. And so like, it got totally overhauled and and went back to, uh, um, it, and it was more successful. Like it was mm-hmm. more successful, the, the update, but... Ryan had to like basically redo uh, oh, everything, and so yeah, we continued to uh, needle the designer. <laughs> uh, if you're watching, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when working on VFX, you mentioned that you kind of do a little of like a bunch of different things, um, like including a little bit of modeling and stuff. Uh, is there like? Is it kind of like a, a, a weird line where some things might kind of half belong to VFX and another discipline at the same time? Like, for sure. You have we to do, do like a ton of collaboration to make yep. that stuff work, right? Yeah, we do a lot of cross-discipline stuff for sure. Okay. Like we don't do that much uh, modeling. Most of the time we'd be like, okay, we need um, you know, a, a projectile for this thing you know, mm. that we would, you know, the weapons guys would make uh, the projectile, which then we're going to you know, put a trail on and, and make it, you know, we're going to add particle effects to it to make mm-hmm. it look like it's, you know, got a jet and smoke and sparks or whatever coming off of it. Um, and so we, but, but yeah, we work, we do a lot of cross-discipline stuff. So it's working with design on maybe the scripting and the damage and the setup and all that. And then working right. with, you know, other disciplines will work with sometimes, uh, sometimes lighting will, will, will get them in on stuff. Lots of times, um, the lighting that we're adding to an effect is, is pretty basic. You know, we just want a light that right. that adds, we just want to help ground the effect, right? If there's not a light in it, then, you know, when you have a big explosion, it, you want it to, to light the environment, right? Otherwise, right. It, doesn't, yeah. it feels a little bit disconnected. Um, and most of the time, we can get by just doing that. We can just put a light in there. But sometimes things are more complicated, and we'll, we'll tap the lighting guys. Mm. Um, people, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, or uh, we'll do, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of work with design, a lot of work with uh, the combat group. Okay. Uh, we work with them pretty closely. So, yeah, a lot of cross discipline stuff for sure. That's always big. It's big across. It doesn't really matter what discipline you're in. Like that's a huge thing. Being able to communicate with people and and speak up, and you know, if you see a problem, you have to. Right. So you know, find out what's going on and, and ask, and yeah, yeah. not be a jerk, right? Obviously, like maybe not obvious. <laughs> if it's not obvious, it should be. Yeah. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> like, 
By the way, it's Loshi in the chat says you have a lovely beard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when working on VFX, like what are the... Because I haven't really seen anybody here. I've never had the chance to see anybody working on VFX stuff here yet. But like, what are the what are the tools you use? Like, is it is there is it Maya or do we have like a bunch of like? Because I know we have a lot of internally developed stuff here. Yeah, no, we're uh, our stuff is uh, all internal. We have awesome okay, cool. uh, rendering programmers that uh, support us and and made uh, our. Our particle editor is is part of the is, is part of our in-house tool here. Um, we used to we've always uh, we used to use um, kind of a weird hybrid uh, of um, we used Max back in okay. Um, so in in for SR one and SR two. Um, Max was the was the was the editor was the yeah. editor that we built everything in. So it 3ds was, Max, 3ds Max. Okay, yeah. yeah. Was the so that was uh, part of the insanity of those projects, right? Is like trying to build the whole world. So yeah. still water was entirely built in Max, and so it was a series of uh, a series of Max files. Okay. So like every district was a giant max file. <laughs> oh, God. And then it, would, it was actually multiple max files, so there was, like, one that would be, like, terrain and one that was buildings and one that was props mm -hmm. and one that was just nav mesh. Uh, and then uh, they would all, on export, uh, they would all, all the max files would get sort of merged together into one thing, and it was so I'm imagining that is uh, brutal. Yeah, I'm imagining you're just sitting there watching a meter very slowly fill that for is, like uh, two days or something, right? It was awful, and it was <laughs> um, super uh, buggy. And so the yeah. worst part is that you would sometimes on SR one you would into, but uh, you would you could sometimes uh, export and crunch, and it would go all the way to the end, yeah, and then crash. Oh man, and, uh, and so yeah, there's a lot. There oh, was a lot no. of uh, shell shocked and paranoid uh, environment artists. Yeah, but but anyway, I got totally sidetracked. But uh, so on on those projects, we had um, we used Max, we used 3ds Max, but it was kind of a, a modified. Um, it was really the the particle editor that sort of lived in Max. It was like a custom rollout in Max. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of what was made for RFG that we leveraged for a while, and it sort of shared, like, sort of between SR1, SR2, RFG, like, is sort of where um, we did a lot of a lot of good stuff got done, and then okay. uh, uh, then we got better better tools uh, on Saints Row Three, but the, but the particle editor was still Max. Okay. Even as even as other parts of the studio, um, SR3 was really just the terrain was made um, in our in-house editor. Okay. It was really just the, the, it was literally the world editor, right? It was literally the terrain editor at that point. Um, and then uh, on, well, SR4 was also Max. Mm -hmm. And then uh, AOM was uh, in between um, SR4 and uh, AOM is where we made the switch okay. to our standalone uh, editor and uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's awesome. Cool. We, we do a lot of cool stuff. Th this reminds me um, I don't know if you ever saw, this is like happened a long time ago. So I think the um, the second Ratchet and Clank game on the PlayStation 2 Sure. They had like a, a whole this Easter egg thing called the Insomniac Museum or something. Basically, if the PlayStation's two system clock was like three a.m. in the morning or something, you're standing a very specific. That's awesome. <laughs> and if you were standing in a very specific spot of the game, you would get transported to a secret museum full of like cut content and like director's That's commentary. Like you walked around and stuff, and like different developers when you press a button at like an exhibit, they would talk about this thing they worked on. It was really cool. <laughs> but a really cool thing they had in there. 
was um, they had this one part in the museum where they were talking about um, how they wanted to have water with like actual physics to it, like yeah. for when you walk through and stuff. And they were talking about basically like, oh, this was way too intense for the PS2 to do. But they have a little patch of that water there, and they actually like hook it up to your controller so that you can like mess with the physics of the VFX. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And like they were just talking about, <laughs> and they actually they actually had what was even cooler was like right next to it. They basically let you tap into like their VFX system and like modify the VF all the different VFX are in the game. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Uh, it was really neat, and that that was like <laughs> that was actually my first exposure to like particle systems and like realizing like oh that's how this stuff kind of works. Um, For sure, it's one of those things that unless you know, you don't know, right? And you're just like oh yeah, yeah, it's a texture, it's a flip book, or it's a like whatever. You don't even know, right? You just sort of take it for granted, easy to take for granted, right, yeah. until you mess with it more and, and learn more about it. But yeah, that's that's super cool. Yeah, and it's, um, uh, I remember you were bring you brought up, uh, you brought up uh, Rihanna, who, who you, you said used to be the lead, right? She used to be the lead for Rihanna, Rihanna. Yeah. Rihanna? Um, Cause she works at, um, where's she working at? Is it Insomniac or? Yeah, she's working on Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man, cause I remember uh, I follow her on Twitter and she actually tweeted like the very first I remember seeing her just like last week tweeting about the very first VFX she made for that game. And it's just like the steam rising off the pizza that Spider Man gets right. in that game. Um, <laughs> that's great. I mean, that, and that's one of those things, right? Where like, there's stuff like that. Uh, like, you know, like where it's a super simple thing. Yeah. Right. And and if there was no steam on the pizza, Spider Man got a bad pizza. Right. <laughs> I mean, like you probably like, is the game gonna break? No. But is it is it more immersive? And does it feel more relatable? And is it you know because of that? Yeah, it does. Like yeah, it, yeah. It's the things that little little things, right? And it's you know, it's good. It's yeah. good stuff. Have you seen the game? Um, have you played or seen Control at all? I don't know. No, I don't know that one. Um, so it came out like start of like early September, I think. I forget exactly when. Um, it's a third-person shooter made by Remedy, the people who made like Alan Wake and Quantum yeah, yeah, Break. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, maybe I did hear about this. But it's uh, I finished that game. It's a really good game. But they have super impre impressive VFX in that game. Nice. Um, it. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting thing too because it's like. Basically, the, this like art direction thing with the VFX that's throughout the whole game is basically um, you're in this otherworldly, like endless building that constantly rearranges it, itself. Oh uh, yes. Um, okay. Okay. But like when you fight the enemies, um, there's like this weird like psychic energy effect on everything. So like when you shoot somebody or they die or you get a headshot. Um, there's like this big like kind of oil slick rainbow colored explosion but it like just kind of puffs out and it sits there and when you walk through it, it actually like deforms That's super around you it's crazy <laughs> um, it, it was it was one of those particle effects where you see it and it feels like um, just because you that hasn't been a really a style I've seen in a game yet where it feels like it almost felt like I was looking at something like kind of next gen yeah, or something cool. super cool um, yeah, are there is there are there any other games that you've seen recently that have had VFX that s stick out to you or have been just work that's impressed you in the past? I mean, there is a crap ton of impressive VFX. Um, I I am super behind on everything, mm -hmm. so I have not like I have been playing recently. Uh, what I have been playing most is Bad North. Do you know that Bad North? I it don't is, think I know that. What is it's that? It's just like a little. Um, it was on Game Pass, but it's like okay. a it's a tower defense game with Vikings, and uh, it has like this kind of awesome uh, hand drawn art style. It has really good animation. It's all tiny, like it's happening, like it's a sort of an isometric view that you can you can swing around and you're right. telling your units what to do or whatever. But it has like. Uh, it's really simplic, it really uh, simplistic and and beautiful, yeah. um, but it has like this just blood. They just <laughs> they just kill each other, and you know it leaves like blood you know blood decals all over the ground, and and the archers will shoot at, at as you know ship. It's all on islands. You're on a series of islands. Okay. 
And so you're defending the islands, and they'll come from boats or whatever, and, and they'll launch, uh, they'll shoot arrows at them, and it, the arrows uh, will hit from far out, and they'll hit the water, and they'll ripple and leave, like splash in the water, and it's like, mm-hmm. it's all really small. Like, you can't, you can only get so close, but it's so pretty, and so, uh, it feels so good, right? When those archers are firing, you're like, yeah, yeah, get him, get him, get him, <laughs> right? And and it, just that level of detail, right, that, that the arrows miss, mm-hmm. but hit the water and make ripples. Yeah. Um, makes it feel so much better than if if the arrows could easily just go in the water and just miss. And and I would still feel satisfied because half the guys on that boat got hit and I see them die with an arrow in their chest or whatever, right? Yeah. But it feels so much better to me just as a player when I see those missing arrows still still exist, right? In the world. They still yeah. they're causing the water to, and so you see like and you hear it and you hear this and splash, 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 splash. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> It's really good. But, I mean, it's it's very, like, in terms of... Uh, it's 100% the opposite end of the spectrum from, yeah, yeah. Uh, from what you're talking no, about. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, man, I have to check that game out now. It's okay. super good. I don't, I don't need... I, I'm ashamed to say I don't even know the developer, but it's rad. They knocked it out of the park. It's really, huh. it's really fun. It has like a whole skill tree, and you get it has permadeath where your commanders will you can level them up, and they get and then they can die, and they're gone, and they have traits. So they uh, it's awesome. Okay, it's really deep. It's good. Oh man, <laughs> I really gotta check that out. When I like I, I have the opposite problem where um, I I try really hard to keep up with yeah. that, but like. Uh, I don't have a kid or anything, so I have lots of extra free time <laughs> to play video games. Uh, but, um, yeah, I have the opposite problem of it's just, like, the, this past month and a half, two months, every single major release is something that's incredibly good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, like, it's not even just AAA stuff. It's, like, every indie thing that comes out. Right. It's just like, oh, that's really good, too. <laughs> um, Indivisible just came out. That looks really good. Um but anyways, that, that's a, a topic for the very end of the stream. Yes. Uh, one one other thing I meant to ask you about before uh, got sidetracked asking you about tools and stuff is uh, what's like an average day of work here for you like? Uh, it, I don't know, man. They're not that average. <laughs> um, uh, so I get in uh, pretty early. I'm one of the early risers. I have okay. kids, so I take my kids to school and I get in early. Um I get a lot, uh, I have a lot of email, always and forever, mm-hmm. um, but I like to get in and I and I I don't check email for like an hour, and so I can like have time to actually um, get in and, uh, and, and do stuff. I try to get, <laughs> that's sort right. of my key time. <laughs> um, I tend to, uh, I, I manage uh, RVFX, we do have, we do have, uh, a good group of three uh, VFX outsourcers, mm-hmm. uh, and so I'm back to my oh, uh, back outsource in- management. Oh, rates. geez. Um, and so I I check in uh, I check in with them, and uh, and and you know try to get them. I you know I have to keep them going and get get them new stuff and and, evaluate, and review their mm-hmm. their current stuff, and then um, have a lot of meetings. W- uh, uh, which <laughs> too many meetings, but um, uh, and then and then it's just a lot of it is checking in uh, with the team. Uh, my team is awesome, and so they are uh, pretty self-contained, which is great. Okay. Um, it's but uh, checking in if you know a- as they need things, and then and then a lot of m- a lot of my day honestly is spent uh, in that uh, sort of that cross-discipline communication. Um, I'm kind of the, the bridge mm-hmm. to effects for the bulk uh, of the team as, as uh, individual artists are, are working on stuff. They will, right. they will collaborate, of course. You know, like, oh, I'm working on this, um, this weapon, and, and so they'll talk to the designer, you know, one-to-one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tend to get a lot of sort of first blush 
questions in terms of like, hey, do we have anything to use for this? This is what I'm trying to do. Do we have anything I can use as placeholder? Or right. or have you heard about this? And and you know, and so a lot of um, a lot a lot of my day is honestly spent. Uh, talking and talking to people uh, about effects and about what we can do and most of the team would say a lot of my day has been saying no. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Uh, and, and then and then when I then as much as I can, um, I, I still try to make stuff, but I'm yeah, uh, I'm terrible in terms of like <laughs> actually finding time to make stuff. That's one of the hardest uh, hardest things mm. um, about doing any sort of lead role is not uh, getting as much time to actually make stuff. So, right. But. Uh, so when it comes to like VFX that are needed for the game, like obviously it's like, oh, uh, say this proposed weapon is going to be in the game. There's probably right. already a lot of knowns for what is needed for that. But is there a lot of stuff where VFX aren't made or even know they're needed until somebody goes like, oh, we need something for this? Uh, for sure. <laughs> okay. For sure. Um, so our designers are are pretty good. Like for the most part, um, we have like people are really good about like sort of forecasting, you know what what they think we need. We and that's like conversation we always have is like tell me, you know tell me the tell me the problem you have, not the solution you think that problem needs. Right is kind of a is kind of a common thing, right? Like you know don't don't tell me what what you think it should what should do just tell tell me what you're trying to solve you have a you know you need it needs to be a you know an area of denial that i need to create with this or it, it needs to you know it needs to be a giant area of effect that's going to you know chain cause more damage or whatever or 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 it's a you know, single shot whatever right like yeah. whatever the thing you know sort of tell me that right rather than tell me like oh it's I think it should look like this or whatever. It's useful to get that feedback, right? Right. Of it should look like this, but sometimes it can be it can be too limiting. Maybe it's not the you know the solution you have is maybe not what we need to do. Um. So for the most part, I would say we're um, our team is pretty good. We have people that that understand the needs up front. Mm. Um, we we always still. Uh, Will there'll be a thing where it's like, oh, we we need something here, right? Um, there's I try to get on people that are too hand wavy and like, oh, we'll just cover this with effects. <laughs> like that's a thing that people say. Yeah, um, not too much here, but that is sort of a common. Uh, yeah, can we just put an effect here? <laughs> and I will say no. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you can't just put an effect there. It's a human sized. Thing that you want to cover up. That's a giant. Th that's as tall as you, as the player. Like, no, you can't just <laughs> wave your hand and make a thing. Like, it's got to be. Like, we have to have a reason for it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Even as you know, ridiculous as our games get, there is like always internal logic, right? There, there's a, there's a, there's right. that line like that we constantly um, are. Are flirting with, I think, at like that sort of what is a reasonable, like what's the reasonable expectation uh, as a player mm -hmm. that that is going, you know, that that I'm going to expect and, and get a satisfying payoff. I want it to be satisfying, but like, what's a bridge too far? What's you know, and and how do you sort of skirt that line, right? I feel like um, right. there's you can you can flagrantly, you know. You can have the shark gun, right, which is like sort of goes so far right. that it is just ludicrous and becomes satisfying again, right? But you can also have stuff that's like, you know, we've all played games where it's like, oh, there's an invisible wall here because I'm not supposed to go there, right? Yeah. And that's okay. Like, sometimes that's okay. Like, as players, we're like, okay, you know, if you're trying to break the game and you hit the invisible wall, you're like, okay, I, I get that. I'm not supposed to go there. That's fine. But sometimes it's like, oh, those. How many? How could there possibly be that many guys in that? It's <laughs> obviously a monster closet, right? Like it's yeah. like a little, you know, two by two room. Like it's full. Like 138 guys have come out of there, right? Or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't know. It's a bad example, but. Um, no, yeah. Sometimes there's just there, there's just times where it's like the. 
there it, some games sometimes have like inelegant solutions to prevent a player from breaking a game yeah, or uh, or keeping yeah. them from going to a place. Yeah. So it's just like instead of having like a graceful solution or whatever, where it's like that makes in world sense. It's just like right. Right. Like and just a giant particle effect of like a no symbol comes up like <laughs> bam, 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 don't go there. Or, or something. even just like we don't know how to we don't know how to get the enemy to spawn, like we'll just play a big smoke puff and yeah. they'll show up or, or whatever. Like and, and sometimes that's okay. Like that may be perfect, right? There's yeah. cases where that's exactly exactly what we want, right? And sometimes you're like, well, no, we can probably come up with something better than that. Like we can, you know, we can that's how um, in AOM the uh, the drop ships, uh, drop pods were. Uh, oh yeah. Were were sort of that solution, right? Was like, mm -hmm. how do we, the qu the thing to solve was like, how do we get people? You could be anywhere, and we need to spawn enemies there, and and they can't always come from off screen because mm -hmm. that's a feel bad if you if you don't know where they're coming from, and you know, and and yeah. you might be in a weird position, and so the, the drop pod was like, we can. We can drop a monster closet there, which we'll and then they come out, right? Yeah. And, um, by, so. by the way, I, I've heard uh, a couple different people say this uh, throughout working here. Is is feel bad a term lots of people use here? I feel like I think Alex Mejia, when he still worked here, also said feel bad a lot when talking about game design and stuff. I don't know if that is a uniquely volition term. I would say okay. it's not. Yeah. Um, a feel bad would just be something that feels bad as a player. Yeah, totally. Right? Like, it's I, feel I just bad. feel like, like I've never heard anybody say feel bad until I started working uh, maybe. here. Maybe I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't think we can take credit for feel bad. Uh, but, all right. But maybe, maybe, maybe we we just use it a lot. Whatever, whoever yeah. coined that term, <laughs> somebody here read Could the article be, it, or whatever. I don't know what. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> we got uh, two questions from Feared Symmetry in the chat uh, asking uh, if you could only work on one effect. Uh, which would you choose? I, I, I guess because they're, they're asking specifically for the game. Uh, I guess I suppose for whatever game I'm working on, if I yeah. if I could only do a single effect for it. Yeah. Is there um, one specific thing you would really want to work on above all else? That's a hard one. So I, um, I think. I, I don't know. This is gonna sound like a cop out answer. <laughs> um, I so so like weapon effects are are fun, right? Because you use what you engage as a player. You engage with those a lot. Yeah. Um, th I I think uh, the most sort of satisfying effect to work on um, is the. So just like anything, right? Any sort of creative uh, process, right? Yeah. Effects is the same. Where the thing that is most satisfying is the thing that you can take from your head and get it to function uh, straight in the most like straightforward and. Uh, easy way, right? Yeah. Like, the thing that, like, this is exactly what I meant to do, and it works just like I want, and it feels just like I want, and it it looks just like I want, right? Mm -hmm. And so on uh, on Agents of Mayhem, I did, uh, there were there were two, there, like, <laughs> I did a lot of effects on AOM, but there there's two things that stand out in my mind when I think back about it. Um, one was the Gravity Dominator, which was this oh, yeah. giant screen filling vortex of noise and turbulence and wind and uh, and and so that was cool because it was like a big sort of showpiece boss fight kind of effect like a big effect um, but it was really difficult mm -hmm. and I really struggled uh, with it to get it to. To do that, right? To have it yeah. be like the thing that I meant, and, and th that we wanted, right? And like we had, we did concepts for it, and um, Mike, uh, my lead, Mike uh, Cosner, like did, did previs, and we 
like we we like critiqued it and we and we just hammered it trying to like make it behave and and do what we wanted and to sell the whole vibe and um and it was then and that was that was a cool experience but it was really hard and really frustrating yeah um by on the opposite end of the spectrum for me was the parking meter death effect <laughs> That I did on AOM, um, which was so satisfying. Um, it's super simple. It's a parking meter that when you drive through it, you get a big shower of coins, right? Yeah. And it doesn't matter that everything in uh, our futuristic city of Seoul was electric and <laughs> uh, credit card based, probably. It doesn't matter because when you drive through a parking meter, your expectation as a player is coins better shoot out. Coins of Coins better fall out of that thing. Yeah, I and, remember and bounce around. I still distinctly remember like <laughs> driving over those all the time, like when I had to capture stuff, just because it like the particle effect combined with the like the jangly change noise yeah, it man, made when you hit it, it was really satisfying. It's super satisfying, like, and that was like like I always wanted to drive over those because of that. And that is like that like really was <laughs> like it was such a different experience that I was just like I was still like I'm still I still like that effect right yeah. um because it was so it was one of those where it was like this is what I know exactly what I want this to be <laughs> yeah. and it was easy to do and it like it you know and I and I whatever I, it was really straightforward um and it's not super sexy you know it's not this like giant you know it's gonna get a big picture in the write up or whatever. It's yeah. just a freaking parking meter, but yeah, it, it doesn't really... get a cutscene like the gravity dominator did. <laughs> exactly. Introducing it. I made those cutscenes, by yeah, the way. Exactly. Every single one that yeah, exactly. camera rotating around that, that was me. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's um, super good. So I don't know. I don't know if that really answers your question, but that I think I was gonna answer. Was... <laughs> uh, and and the other question, I guess, is uh, is there is there any VFX work where it's like when it comes down to it, to it, it's like you specifically would go like, "I'll handle this one." Like you only trust yourself to do this VFX. No. No. Okay. No. I think uh, I <laughs> I know myself, uh -huh. and I know my team well enough. Uh, my team is fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so I I give them like I am not the. Hot shot, <laughs> rock star, like uh, that is no. I'm yeah. not the the best. Like that is a that's kind of a. I don't think you need to be the best in your discipline to to be the to be the lead. Like you just have to know. You have to be willing to do it, right? You have to be willing to do it, and you have yeah. to like. There's a bunch of stuff to juggle and communicate and manage and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, you don't need to be the, the rock star. Um, you need the rock star to be the rock star. You need the yeah. people with... And so I. that's why most of my day is, tends to be meetings, right? I try to jump on the meeting grenade for my team yeah. so that they can make all the awesome stuff, you know, that, that you get to play, right, and get to see, right? Because... Because they're gonna do it better than I am, like, <laughs> like ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Right? <laughs> yeah, that is, hashtag that is, real talk. That is like it's a awesome. um, they're good. A a just like thing I've like I have fell into this line of thinking too. Like when I first started working here, before I started working here, was just like oh, like the lead must be like the like on top of. Like, people don't, I feel like a lot of the time we hear, like, lead blank, and you think, like, oh, they're the best one right. at this thing, and it's like, no, they're the person who, like, is the one who seemingly is able to wrangle all the work for the other people so they can just do with their job Absolutely. what they need to do. Absolutely. That's, yeah. the, that's the number one thing, I think, and that's, and that's, and that's, you know, that's a hard, it's a hard, I don't know, uh, it's a hard thing to do. That That's hard yeah. to... Um, especially like in, especially I think with, with art, I think it's hard because it's like, cause we're, well, not just with art, all, all of us, right. We're all, you know, in game devs are all creative people, right. Not yeah. just artists, designers, writers, and everybody like it's, 
programmers too. Like right? we're all creative people. We're involved in this because we want to make stuff, right? And so one of the challenges of of leading any team, right, is that you don't get to make as much stuff. You don't get to get your hands in it as much because you're doing more stuff. You're you're wrangling yeah. more stuff and having meetings and, and talking about like how are we gonna do the the next thing, you know, scheduling, planning and stuff like that, getting ready to do things so that so that when when people making this stuff hit it, they're they're ready to go, right? And when 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 I don't do that right, then then we we end up with you know misfires where it's like, oh, this is a huge yeah. pain in the ass because this we're we're working on it before it was ready. We just we just had that happen recently. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, but you know, but we we react and we figure it out and we you know keep going and, and right. So. All right. Cool. <laughs> Uh, thanks for being on the stream, man, talking about this. It's, I don't think we've had anybody... The only time I think we had somebody talk about VFX before was specifically when we... I think Brianna was on talking about the stuff for Oleg, like it, the freeze gun and stuff. Okay, yeah. Like uh, coming up to launch for AOM. So I think that's the, the, <clears throat> the only other time we've had people on to talk about VFX we should have, we should have. I'm sorry I didn't bring any... We should have pulled some stuff up and you know, talked they're, about they're, it, like actually broken stuff down more. There's I mean, a lot more to... Later on, we could totally be, like do a stream or something where it's just like <clears> you or, or somebody else from your team, if they'd like to talk about it, just kind of break down working on awesome. VFX. For sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. We, we've had... Yeah. Um, in the past, uh, we had animators on doing like basically just doing their GDC presentation on like animating the agents like on stream. So yeah, we could totally do something like that. For doesn't have to be a GDC sure. <laughs> presentation sure. for sure. But yeah, no, that would be awesome for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I got one more question to, for you before uh, we leave. And uh, how do you feel about the the new game we're working on? It's awesome. I I feel good about it. I I'm uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, um, <laughs> I'm tired, <laughs> but. Making uh, no, a game I'm, is a lot of work. Uh, yeah, I mean that's just sort of my general state these days. But uh, no, it's it's good. I think it, it will be. I think it'll be cool. I'm. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I, yeah, I don't know how. To, I mean, like, how do I answer? It's, it's always like, a little I mean, tough it's because cool. like, it's yeah. it's always a little tough just because you know we can't be specific about anything yet. <laughs> I think you know. we're doing. I'm I'm super. Uh, I'm super. Um, I'm excited about what what we're doing um, uh, on the VFX team um, yeah. for this game. Um, we we had kind of uh, on on Age, Age of Mayhem was uh, really um, uh, there was a lot of pro, a lot of stuff to solve, a lot of sort of problems to solve uh, right. on on agents. Um, but we, we figured there, we made some improvements, some system side improvements. Um, so I, just to be sort of geeky here, <laughs> but like, so Agents of Mayhem has like the best, uh, weapon hit effects mm -hmm. of any, any game that we had done in terms of, uh, surface response. Right. So if you shoot like stuff in Agents of Mayhem, if you shoot grass, shoot the ground, you get grass. You shoot brick, you get brick crumbles. You shoot like uh, shoot concrete, you get concrete dust. You shoot wood, you get wood chips. Yeah. Um, and there, we did a lot of stuff with that. That was, and again, I don't know. Most of you probably didn't care uh, but it was cool and I feel like we uh, we're we sort of plussed that mm. um, we're doing a lot of really cool stuff on this new game that I, I'm super excited about uh, in terms of sort of it just uh, improvements on uh, how responsive uh, yeah the, I think this game is gonna feel super responsive to to what the player's doing. Just like, kind of like to so bring it all the way back to like, you know, the world feels dead without effects. Um, yeah. Like, I think this game is going to feel super good just in terms of everything that the player is able to, the, the way the, the world responds 
you know, yeah. the way, like, it's oh, super right. rad. I just remember that super we, we had that team meeting a few weeks ago where they showed off a, a one, like, big, I can't say what it is, like, environmental effect thing or whatever. I think it was a few weeks ago? I don't know. Time is weird. Time is super weird. Time, time, yes. time dilation, it's <laughs> weird. Time compression, maybe? I don't know. That's Final Fantasy. We, ha we have shut off some stuff recently. Yeah. But I'm spacing. I'm totally spacing yeah. on, what, on what we should. But, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see more of that stuff, like, once it starts popping up in-game. Because I check the game every once in a while just to see, like, what's it look like right now? But, you know, I check it too off, too, yes. too frequently, yes. too frequently, because it's just like, of course, like, you're not going to see any changes until, like, a certain amount of time has passed, but I'm just like, well, it, uh, it's been two days, is the game different yet? And it, and it, like, it comes in sort of fits and spurts, right? Like, sometimes, yeah. like, like, stuff will, will make changes, which, in you know, we, we make changes, to make things better in the future, but it incrementally breaks things that we're working, yeah. right? And it's sort of that fits and starts, and uh, yeah, and so that's we're, we have a little bit of that going on right now. So yeah. like, <laughs> but it yeah, will be badass. Yeah, there, uh, there's I'm, one yeah. thing I, I always see where I just know it's just like, oh, I know they're working on it, but it's just like for like a while, there's been a lot of like yes. white textures everywhere. Yes. <laughs> but it's just have like, no fear. Those will go. That's away. how it goes. I Those remember the same thing away. with AOM, and it's just all of a sudden one day it's just like, oh, it looks really good now. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. That is so, always a crazy yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for being on, man. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. This is super cool. I hope this wasn't yeah. super boring. I, <laughs> I mean, I I check the comments and like the dev chats, and people there there's an audience of people that really appreciate this type of stuff because like, you know, not, not too many studios like will specifically just sit down and just talk about this type of stuff for a long time. So, but uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, thanks. I gotta say hi to my friend Matt, oh, who always hey, Matt. follows the stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, we stream weekly. I was gonna say we generally stream on Thursdays, but that's not true next week because if you missed the start of the stream uh, with Mike talking about it, we are actually streaming at a different time next week. We will be streaming on Monday, which is the uh, 14th of October. Oh, the 11th? <laughs> oh, my bad, the 11th. <laughs> it's next Monday. Um, well, it's on the 14th. It's the 11th anniversary. It's, yeah, it's on the 14th. 11th <laughs> yeah. anniversary. The 11th would be tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, wait a minute. But he's saying it. Uh, yeah, on the 14th, it's the 11th anniversary of Saints Row 2. That's uh, ridiculous. It, right? It's like, I remember Over when that decade. game. I remember <laughs> when that game came out and I first played it a little bit. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I. Yes. I <laughs> I have three kids. Hello to my kids if you're watching this. They sometimes watch this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And my wife. Hello. Hello. Uh, but yeah, make sure to tune in next Monday. Uh, we will be streaming some really cool stuff for the 11th anniversary of Saints Row 2. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Like, trust me on this. Mike hyped it up at the start, too. Like, there's going to be... Some, Mike's been working a long time some really cool shit. For the stream, so yeah, there's uh, all kinds of good yeah. Sensor two stuff. <laughs> so yeah, please uh, yeah. make sure to tune in for that. You don't want to miss it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week, guys. See you later. See you later. Bye. <laughs>